My name is Ian Lipkin. I'm a physician, a scientist, and a COVID survivor. I helped make the movie Contagion in the hope of preventing pandemics like this one. Hi everyone, and welcome to Truth Over News. That was Ian Lipkin. He is the guy behind the movie Contagion. He worked in Beijing as an intermediary between the World Health Organization and the Chinese regime. And he also worked closely with Chinese Communist Party United Front leader Chen Zhu. But we all got to know him as the co-author of Proximal Origin, the infamous article that was conceived by Fauci and his group of scientists to push the false narrative that the COVID pandemic had a natural origin. And now it emerges that Lipkin also worked for Peter Daszak, the president of EcoHealth Alliance, through whom Fauci funded the Wuhan lab. That's quite a resume. The problem is that Lipkin didn't tell anyone about the last part. When he wrote in Proximal Origin that we do not believe that any type of laboratory-based scenario is plausible, he had a duty to disclose that he was affiliated with Daszak and that he had worked for Daszak's EcoHealth Alliance. But the name Lipkin does not appear in the article's conflicts declarations, not in 2020 when the article first came out and not since. That's a big problem and it's not the only problem for Lipkin and his crew of Fauci scientists. Ian Lipkin's resume on the Columbia University webpage calls him a virus hunter, but Lipkin obviously didn't do a good job hunting viruses or preventing pandemics. However, he does know a lot more about the origin of the pandemic than he lets on. Lipkin is, or was, part of a tight little coterie of Fauci-funded scientists who keep showing up in all the key places, in Wuhan, in Beijing, at EcoHealth, and in Fauci's secret emails. These people are like little Forrest Gumps of the pandemic. When the magazine Science published a paper in January of 2020 that indirectly tied Fauci to dangerous virus experiments at the Wuhan lab, Lipkin and his crew were called into action not to deal with the pandemic, but to cover up its origins. His so-called virus hunting credentials, coupled with close CCP connections, were exactly what was needed for the role, and so Lipkin was chosen as one of five hand-picked scientists who would write the highly influential Proximal Origin paper. The paper boldly claimed that the virus came out of nature, creating a new narrative that was badly needed for Fauci and his team after a Chinese whistleblower disclosed that the virus almost certainly came out of the Wuhan lab, the same lab where genetically engineered viruses were being created in Fauci-funded experiments. The paper was quickly removed from the internet, but the idea of a lab origin had been seeded, and Fauci needed to generate a counter-narrative. This is where Proximal Origin comes in. It remains one of the most cited science papers of all time. Unfortunately, and by design, all that citing was pointing in the wrong direction. Fauci even used the paper to directly and brazenly contradict President Trump on the White House podium, falsely claiming the paper proved that the virus came out of nature. Fauci did not disclose his role in shaping the paper, nor that he was funding the authors. Fauci should have been fired on the spot, but that's a topic for another show. Lipkin was suddenly showered with more than $3 million from Fauci after the Proximal Origin article was published. While some of this information was previously known through various Freedom of Information email releases over the past year, it was not known that Lipkin was also directly connected to Peter Daszak and his EcoHealth Alliance. That part of the story only unraveled this past week through the efforts of transparency group US Right to Know. EcoHealth is the shady so-called pandemic prevention group that is very bad at preventing pandemics. What they are good at, though, is soliciting trucks full of taxpayer cash. They received tens of millions of dollars from Fauci and from the Pentagon, supposedly to hunt for virus threats. But instead of using that money to hunt for virus threats, they created virus threats, specifically by genetically engineering brand new viruses at the Wuhan lab. EcoHealth's 2018 proposal for making COVID in a lab is a perfect blueprint for creating a pandemic. But when that pandemic arrived, they kept the proposal to themselves. It was not even known to exist until a whistleblower leaked the proposal last year to another transparency group, Drastic. 
That Lipkin, who was instrumental in creating the false natural origin narrative, was so closely tied to Dazak's eco health and that he failed to disclose his ties is more than troubling. It is straight up deception. In 2011, Lipkin worked directly with Dazak, as a newly unearthed eco health tweet reveals. The two men co authored at least 10 papers. Then, in 2013, Lipkin was honored by Peter Daszak as one of EcoHealth's own scientists. And then in 2014, Lipkin was listed as a partner on EcoHealth's website. The page has since been taken down, but not before it was archived. And in 2016, Daszak and Lipkin appeared together at an event in New York. It was at that 2016 event that Daszak, in his typical boastful way, told us what he was doing at the Wuhan lab. We found other coronaviruses in bats, a whole host of them. Some of them looked very similar to SARS. So we sequenced the spike protein, the protein that attaches to cells. Then we, well, I didn't do this work, but my colleagues in China did the work. You create pseudoparticles, you, look, you insert the spike proteins from those viruses, see if they bind to human cells. And each step of this, you move closer and closer to this virus could really become pathogenic in people. Astonishingly, Dazak described exactly what led to the pandemic. You insert the spike proteins to see if they bind to human cells. It's almost surreal listening to this now, seeing Dazak brag about these dangerous experiments before the pandemic started. And yet, no one did anything to stop it. Fauci just kept wiring the money. But there's something else remarkable about the clip. Watch Lipkin closely. Sequence the spike protein, the protein that attaches to cells. Then we, well, I didn't do this work, but my colleagues in China did the work. You create pseudoparticles, you, look, you insert the spike proteins from those viruses. There's a very distinct reaction at exactly the point when Dazak started blabbering about what they were doing at the Wuhan lab. And it does not look like Lipkin was very happy about this. Like the rest of Fauci's coterie, Lipkin wanted to play around with viruses without people asking questions. Dazak talking about inserting spike proteins into viruses to make them transmissible in humans was the kind of indiscretion that might have caused people to ask questions. In the end, only a few people asked questions, so new viruses kept being created at the Wuhan lab. Until it all went wrong in 2019. And that's when Fauci and his crew went into cover-up mode. Just like all the other Fauci-funded scientists, Lipkin's private views did not match his public views. Much later, Lipkin admitted that he knew by December 15th, 2019, that there was an outbreak in Wuhan. That's 16 days earlier than any public reporting by the Chinese regime. Lipkin's admission also eliminates the Wuhan seafood market as the source of the pandemic. There would not have been enough time for the virus to spread if Lipkin already knew about the outbreak by mid-December. 